it's Tuesday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. We're in the middle of a cool pattern that will not let up anytime real soon. We're going to talk about uh, some of the longer range trends in this forecast video. But first things first, I want to give a big shout out to the kindergartners and the teachers at Champion Central Elementary School uh, earlier on today. I uh, was fortunate enough to visit a couple of big kindergarten classes. We talked about weather safety. We talked about cool clouds. We kind of talked about what it's like to be a, a meteorologist and all that good stuff. And as always, they had lots and lots of great questions for me up in Champion this afternoon. It's that time of the year where uh, we do a lot of school visits in the springtime, uh, oftentimes, uh, especially once you're into the second and third grade levels. Uh, the weather units, they typically cover those kind of towards the tail end of the school year in April and May. But, uh, you know, I, I do visits uh, for groups as young as kindergarten and all the way up to senior citizens, senior citizens, I should say. I'm visiting a uh, assisted living uh, facility in a couple of weeks, as I've done a few times in recent years. All right, going back to what happened earlier today, we had some fog in some spots this morning, but then it turned out to be a bright uh, midday with just some fair weather cumulus clouds around. Now, the clouds did thicken towards the end of the afternoon today as a weak weather system approaches, but boy, it was a struggle temperature-wise. 12 degrees below the average at the Youngstown Warren Airport today. Par for the course, mid-60s here in the last week of April. Not even close to that today. We won't be close to it once again Wednesday, and that's despite, again, some sunshine in the mix. But we've only got one night and morning where frost is going to be a concern for the next several days. We've got a cool uh, period coming up for the daytime hours, but the nighttime hours will not be especially cool and especially not below freezing once we get beyond Thursday morning. So I would expect freeze warnings to be issued once again for our area by the National Weather Service offices in Cleveland and Pittsburgh um, for tomorrow night into Thursday morning, as some of this will probably drop into the uh, upper 20s, kind of like we did first thing this morning. Let's check in on the rain totals for the month so far. These are actual rain gauges. Uh, that web address, that URL at the bottom, kokoros.org. Go to that uh, website if you want to find out how to become a, uh, a citizen weather observer, get a rain gauge, check it every day, upload your uh, daily rainfall and total precipitation, whether it be snow or sleet or grapple or <laughs> rain, um, to that website, kokoros.org, and we'll have access to that data, and we can plot it on a map like this to show you that hey, you know, rainfall amounts have been fairly uniform across our area in April. As we get into the summer, it becomes much more kind of uh, kind of random in nature, the totals, because of course those scattered thunderstorms that we see a lot of times in the summer can drop a couple of inches in one neighborhood and nothing in the next neighborhood over. But at this time of year, typically uh, rainfall totals are a little more uniform. This is all pretty close to, if not a little below average in some spots, but I would expect our rainfall total for the month of April to be above average in most spots because we've got a pretty good uh, helping of rain coming our way at the end of the week, which we'll talk about in a moment. At 7 o'clock this evening, the bark a little worse than the bite on the radar, a couple of sprinkles, a shower here and there, but a lot of this precipitation is encountering very dry air in the lower levels of the atmosphere. The dew points have been in the 20s to around 30 all day today, so a lot of this gets eaten up as it falls. That precipitation evaporates in the drier air. and. Uh, only really manifests itself as what we call virga, or at most maybe a sprinkle or a light shower. We've got a decent looking day once again coming up on Wednesday, kind of like today, but much like today. It's just going to be a struggle temperature-wise, lower middle 50s at best, with a clear sky tomorrow night, calm winds, high pressure drifts overhead. That's a good recipe for frost formation. But overall, Thursday remains the pick day of the week because despite that cold start, we'll crack 60 in most spots Thursday afternoon, despite some increase in the high level cloudiness. Those high clouds will be the first sign of some changes. Then the cloud deck will lower and thicken towards the end of the day Thursday into Thursday night. And that sets the stage for unfortunately a pretty soggy day Friday. A lot of this will be pretty light, but it's going to rain for a lot of the day Friday into Friday night. Some light rain, some drizzle, probably all the way into Saturday morning as well. Rainfall totals advertised by the modeling right now. We've got a little bit of a spread with the European model checking in over a, an inch and a half. Uh, the GFS suite of modeling is closer to one inch. I kind of like an inch to an inch and a half as far as rainfall totals from Friday through the entire weekend. Now, this graphic only shows through the daylight hours on Saturday, but for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I would expect an inch to an inch and a half to be pretty common with the wettest period over the weekend, probably Saturday morning and then again Sunday afternoon with maybe not as much wet weather Saturday afternoon through Sunday morning. All right, so this is the 8 to 14 day outlook. Not what we like to see if we're longing for some warmth in the longer range. I think as we flip the calendar to May, 
This general pattern is going to stay the same with the warmth uh, focused out west, cooler than average temperatures favored in the east. Now I would expect some moderation in the pattern once we get towards May 7th, 8th, 9th and beyond. But through the first five, six, seven days of May, unfortunately, what you see is what you get. And that means no more 70s and 80s for a while. That doesn't mean that all of May is going to be like that, but at least the first handful of days of May are looking mighty chilly. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Tuesday evening. Be sure and tune in on Wednesday for an updated weekend forecast and everything else you need to know weather-wise for the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys.